community. Good morning. Amen. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I ask that you stand and you get into the praise and worship with us. everybody this morning. I hope everybody's doing good. I hope y'all had a great Thanksgiving. I know I did. I'm glad to see so many people in here today on this wonderful cold Sunday morning. It's okay. We're going to bring the heat up in church today. Amen. <laughs> so today we have a lot in store for y'all. Um, first, we're going to have our prayer by Sister Shuri. And following her, we're going to have the scripture um, by Sister Shannon, and then y'all know the praise team is going to come back up, and we're going to do what we do best. Yeah, we're going to praise God today. We ask y'all to join in with us on that. So y'all can please give a warm welcome for Miss Cherie. Amen. She's 
She said, we're going to bring the heat up in here. That's what I'm talking about. Praise God. Hallelujah. It is a blessing to be in the building on today. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing us here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We could have been anywhere but here. But you brought us here. You allowed us to see another day, and it is a blessing. So I ask that you all stand and join me in this prayer. We're going to ask God to just clear our minds, let us focus on him, and just usher in his spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we just thank you once again, Lord. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord, in our right minds, Lord, with our minds stayed on you, Lord God. We know that we could have been anywhere else but here, but you allowed us to be here, Lord. Help us to keep our minds on you, Lord. Whatever is on our hearts and on our minds, Lord, let it stay maintained on you. You are our everything. We adore you, Lord Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you for what you have brought us through, Lord God. And we just love you and we magnify your name, Lord God. We ask that you, your presence be in this building on today. Let us be here for no other reason but to magnify your holy name, Lord, because you are worthy. You are worthy. We thank you for Jesus dying on the cross for us, Lord, allowing us to be free in you, Jesus. We are free, Lord Jesus. So we thank you once again, Lord, and we pray that everything is just in your order, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And it is so. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, Unity. How are you guys doing this morning? Today's scripture will be coming from Proverbs 14, um, verses 29 through 31. Let me get to it. It says, whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bone. Whoever oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. Thank you for the scripture reading today. to declare to you my past is over in you all things are made new surrender my life to Christ I'm moving I'm not going back I'm moving ahead I'm here to declare to you my past is over in you all things are made new Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you. My past is over in you. All things are made. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you. My past is over in you. All things are made. to declare to you 
So now we come to the best part of the service. Before that, I just want everybody to know we're not having children church today. So y'all get to stay in here and enjoy the word. It's for the youth from a great man of God coming to deliver the word today. Somebody we all know. He's, he's going to make you comfortable. He's going to make the word plain for you to understand. He's a great man of God. He had a major impact on my life. He don't even know it. <laughs> he did. He did. He's going to come and give us a great word. So I just want everybody to pay attention, be focused, be ready, be willing to eat. Take in so you have the word to help you throughout this week. Whatever you need. He might give you a little token that will carry you all the way till next Sunday. So get ready and welcome no other than Mr. Daryl Fountain. Praise God, saints. Praise God, saints. I'm blessed. What about you? All right. I'm trying not to get too excited, but I am. So I think there's a scripture. If I say it wrong, I know pastor helped me out. But it says, uh, what did it say, John? Uh, a man, a man that controls his spirit, controls the city. I'm looking at you for validation like that's it or I messed up. That was close. It was close. So that was my 2023 interpretations of that scripture. So I want to thank everyone for coming out today. And let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for keeping us saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. Father, give us strength right now, Father. Strengthen our bodies right now, God. Give us energy right now, Father. We thank you and we praise you, God. We thank you for your healing virtue right now, Father. Continue to have your way in our lives, Father. Right now, God, hide me behind the cross. And Father, you speak through me. You shine through me. You get all the honor. You get all the glory right now, Father. Touch the hearts of the individuals with your word, Father. And keep your hedge of protection around the word that will be sown into their hearts, Father. Allow the enemy not to plan, trick, lie, or steal it out of their hearts. Turn that heart of stone into a heart of flesh right now, Father, that we may receive you your son and your spirit and your word on today. Have your way. Holy Ghost, fill this temple with your train. Have your way. We thank you and we praise you. And again, Father, bless and anoint your word. These are many blessings. We pray and we all say, Amen, amen, and amen. I just want to say, um, right before I read the scripture, that a uh, couple of people that I want to just say thank you, give a shout out to. Uh, give me about five seconds, Sister Atwater. Give me about five seconds. I want to shout out some, some of my friends, you know, that's looking. You know, you have to make sure so that water all right. Because she was like, man, these preachers be shouting out the whole poor pit and half the church and all that. Get, won't they just get to the word? <laughs> so I just want to take about, about five seconds. You know, I want to, to my viewing audience, you know, thank you for viewing. You have tuned in to the Unity Christian Church here in Fayetteville, Georgia, where our pastor is no, nobody but Smith A. Atwater and his wife, Sister Miriam at water. And this is the Uni Christian Church family right now in Fayetteville, Georgia. So if you're in Atlanta, we 85 South. If you down in Noonan, we 85 North. So whatever you do, get on 85. <laughs> and you will find Fayetteville, Georgia. So I want to thank uh, my viewing audience, which is uh, some of my friends at my dialysis center, 
uh, my nurses and my technicians that's watching on right now. I want to give y'all a shout out. Thank y'all for viewing. And I want to say, I'm speaking this prophetically. I'm going to say what Carabinette says at the end of her songs, at the end of her shows. I'm so glad we had this time together. Because once God healed my body, I ain't seeing y'all no more. So God bless you. <laughs> and my friends that's viewing and my other family. Okay, my five seconds up. I, I got the cue. So. Now we moving on. So now we want to come from Luke, the King James Version. We want to read King, we want to read Luke 15. One, two, three, four, five verses. Y'all kids stay in school. See, I got to count. You know, y'all can get it like that. So you stay in school and do your multiplications and all of that. So we're going to go from Luke chapter 15, verses 17, 20, 22, 23, and 24. All right. So if y'all could stand on your feet. record. There you go. Thank you, Sister Kim. See, look at, look at, look at. Grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Yeah. Uh-huh. Thank you, Sister Kim. All right. So we're going to start with uh, Luke 17. And it says, and when he come, let me make this a little bigger. Pastor was picking at me earlier. And when, and when, he, come, when he came to himself and said, how many higher Servants of my father's house have enough to spare, have enough bread to spare, and I perish with hunger? 20. And he arose and came to his father, and when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. 22, but the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they begin to be merry. May the Lord as blessing to the readers and the hearers of this word. My title message before you sit down. Come home. So to Myrick, tell your friends, come home. Come home. That's it. Come home. Now, we're coming off Thanksgiving holidays. We're coming off the Thanksgiving holidays and going into Christmas. Where children are all grown up and left home. Now, during this time of season, where everyone comes back home to eat and fellowship and be merry with one another. Some leave and doing well. Some bad. But no matter the circumstances of the different lifestyles, mm -hmm. the parents always glad to see their children. Right. Here is a story here in this story, Jesus gives us a parable. Mm -hmm. So, so that word says it's a parable, that means I can make it my own. Because she look at you and say, the Bible said don't add and don't take away from what the Bible says. Amen. Brother Daryl, since it's a parable, Sister Atwater, I can make it the Daryl Fountain story <laughs> of the prodigal son. So now, <laughs> I heard that. 
Jesus gave us more than 30 parables in the gospel. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The definition of prodigal, two definitions. Mm-hmm. One, a person who spends money in a recklessly extravagant way. So in other words, someone who blows money. Two, a person who leaves home and (laughs) behaves recklessly, but later make a repentant return. So in other words, someone out there living a foul and ratchet lifestyle then realize their way of living and return home very sorrowful and apologetic. So now, can y'all give me a few moments right now to show y'all this story of the prodigal son? All right, let's see. Brother Mike, where you at? There you go. Come on, Brother Mike. Bro, Benjamin, you teach him how to play the good toe over there? Try to sound like Prince, ain't he? Prince done got saved. Well, no, he did, no? Yeah. God bless you. So now, turn around and pray them. So that's the father, and that's the son, that's the youngest son. The oldest son, he, he out there doing his business with the Sheeps and all that. He's jealous of his little brother, so he don't want to come in. So now, a father, he has two sons. And the youngest son want to live his own lifestyle now. He tired of living up on his father's roof. Mm -hmm. So he looks at his father, and he said, Dad, (laughs) I'm done. (laughs) Could you please give me my inheritance and let me go find myself so I may, grown-ups only, sow my royal oats. And the father looked at him and said, son, are you sure? He said, dad, I'm more, I have never been more sure in my life. Son, do you know what's out there? Dad, I have to live my own life. So, dad, Let me be. (laughs) Okay, son. Here go your your inheritance. (laughs) Always remember, I love you. So now, the son, he going, I don't know where he's going, but I guess he's going to Atlanta somewhere to find something. But he's walking around. Now, boom, he done moved to Atlanta, Georgia. So he in Atlanta, Georgia now, y'all. His daddy, y'all ready for this? His daddy gave him his inheritance of $30 million. And now he done moved to Atlanta. So he feel like he done made it. He done arrived. So now... He done went and bought a $2.5 million home in Fayetteville, in Fayetteville, Georgia. He done bought a high-rise condo in downtown Atlanta, top floor, worth $15,000 a month, where he could do his little secret rendezvous with. Uh-huh. So now... He bought some vehicles. He got him a he got him a 2023 Bentley. He got him a 2023 Lambo. And he got him a 2023 Dodge Charger Hellcat. <laughs> what, what what you want? And we added that in too. And he bought that too. The Shelby GT Mustang. So now he living a, a extravagant 
if I say that word right, lifestyle of very excludably blah, blah, <laughs> lifestyle. I learned that from an old guy. So now he's spending all this money, you can see, on jewelry. He's spending millions of dollars on his jewelry, necklaces, <laughs> his gold teeth. As, as, as the old country people would say, because I'm not leaving nobody out, his, his gold teethies and his watches, his bracelets, and his clothes. He's spending millions of dollars on that just to look good. He don't bought him a jet. He fly private now. He don't do no commercial no more. And he just throwing Hundreds of thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars away in the strip club, in the nightclubs, where he dancing, and expensive restaurants where you have to make reservations. You just can't walk in these restaurants where plates like $2,500 a plate, $5,000 for four people. He just spinning up. And he's spending a lot of his money on his girlfriend. He's spending a lot of his money on his girlfriend. On his girlfriend. She got the did I go? What did, did, she got the Chanel hand purse. She got her hair done, her nails done. You can't see her feet because she got on them eighteen hundred dollar boots. And so this is where a lot of his money going, and he done bought her a one point five million dollar house as well. He's taking care of her. He's taking care of her. So now. He's spending additional to her, his secret lifestyle, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on his so-called friends. Come here, Jays. Come here, D. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. DJ, hurry up. Hurry up. Run. Run. Y'all, y'all, well, coach, the coach might be looking at y'all, man. Y'all better come on. Hurry up. There's this so-called friend, boy, and they at the strip club just making it rain, just partying. They, they hanging out with, 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 with celebrities in the strip clubs. You know, they, they, they taking pictures. Come here, Donovan, hurry up, Donovan. Come here, Donovan, hurry up. Hanging out, hanging out with NFL football dr number one draft pick, Donovan Fountain. You know, I was going to say little baby, but I ain't want to call him that. So he like football. So he, he hanging out with them, and they just taking pictures and just partying and just spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on champagne and <laughs> thousands of dollars on champagne and all the women just surrounding them. And, and, and everybody just said, man, you got it going on. They just popping his ego up and just taking all his money. So now, y'all can leave now. They got addicted to the fame. <laughs> Yo. You left with your friends, so now you're going home. So now, here we go. He never called home. It's been about five or six years. He never called home. So his mom and dad, his mom and dad, so... You know how parents feel when your child is going through something? So the mom and dad is at home, and they just praying for their baby. Lord, Lord, protect my baby. Lord, help my baby. Not yet, Josh. Lord, help my baby. Lord, protect my baby. Lord, bless my baby. Lord, send my baby home. Lord, make sure that my baby's all right. Oh, Lord, yes, yeah, Lord, yes, yeah, Lord, yes, yeah, Lord, yes, yeah, Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord, Jesus, oh God, oh Jesus, oh Lord, amen. <laughs> now, after a few years, all his money is gone. Everybody left him. 
Soon as all his money is gone and everybody left him, soon as all that happened, then a great famine hit the land. Why the famine couldn't hit the land when he had all that money? God got God got to work. It's all in God's calling. God heard the prayers of his parents. Sending my baby home. He ain't coming home with money. So a great, it says, it says a great famine hit the land. So, so that water, since I'm making it my story, 2023, we're going to say COVID hit. Shut down everything. People losing their jobs. God bless. Holy Spirit comfort these folks. People losing their families because of that. Every, everything just went chaos and went crazy. He had no food. He had no money. He living on the streets. Then all of a sudden he met this man. And the man said, son, you come to my house and help me on my farm. I can't pay you, but I can give you a place to stay. You, you, you can get off these streets. I'll give you a place to stay. So he was like, okay. So now he went back to the man's house and, you know, started tending to his, his farm and, you know, manicuring his animals and all that and then feeding his pigs. That was the n number one reason he had to feed the pigs. So now, one day, he was so hungry, he didn't have no food to eat. He started eating pig slop. He was that hungry. He done went down to the lowest gutter you could ever possibly go. So now, he's eating pig slop, the same disgusting food that he's giving to pigs. Then, all of a sudden, he came to himself and said, hired help. Where you at, Mike? I need you. Hurry up. Hurry up. Where you go? Oh, oh, he, oh, he, he small. He, yeah, yeah, now he broke, y'all. Now, he came to himself and said, hired help. Servants at my father's house eating better than I am right now. My father's help is being treated. <laughs> that, that, that my amen. Thank you, amen. That the Holy Ghost speaking through her. Y'all y'all better out, out of the mouth of babes. Servants eating better in my father's house than I am. Living better than I am. I must. I got to go home. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Get ready, Josh. Not yet. I'm hungry. I got to go. I'm hungry. Now, when a child is going through what they going through, the pain, the agony, the hunger, a parent feels that. That was y'all cue. See, when they start clapping, y'all pull a bit in there. A parent feels that. And the daddy, baby, father, send my son home. That's his prayer. Father, send my son home. Father, send my son home. Son, come home. Come home. Come home. And the mother said, Lord, I feel my baby is hungry, Lord. Just send him home where I can feed him. Send him home where I can feed him. Let's go, Josh. Here come the mother. Yeah. 
So now, he come home. He go home to his parents' house, and they brought the robe, the ring, the fattest calves, so he having a good time. So now, I want y'all to remember this, that if you are a child of God, you will never be happy in sin. You are spoiled goods for the world, the flesh, and the devil. When you were regenerated, it was placed inside of you a vital principle which can never be content to dwell in a dead world. You will have to come back indeed if you belong to the family. Now in Jeremiah 3, 14 and 15, the NIV version, it says, Return, O backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am married to you. I will take you one from a city and two from a family and I will bring you to Zion and I will give you shepherds like Pastor Atwater according to my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now we want to move over to Proverbs 14 and 14 the King James Version. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. A good man shall be satisfied from himself. Very, very familiar. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe, believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Go down to verse 17. You ready? So, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So Jesus died so you can come home. So we're going to tell the backslider, come home. So we're going to tell the LGBT, A, B, C, D, E, L, G community to come home. We're going to tell the brokenhearted to come home. We're going to tell the child molester to come home. We're going to tell the adulterers to come home. We're going to tell the drug addict, come home. The drunkards, come home. The pimps, come home. The prostitutes, come home. Street hustlers, come home. And all sinners, come home. The father is waiting. He sent the lion. He sent the lamb. He sent the way. He sent the truth. He sent the life. He sent the husbandman. He sent the bread of life. He sent the Alpha and the Omega. He sent Emmanuel. He sent the light of the world. He sent the word. He sent the author and finisher of our faith. The bright and morning star. The king of the Jews. Because of one man, sin entered the world. Because of one man, we were delivered from that sin. Because of one man brought death to us. Because of one man, we was delivered from death. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So come home, my son. Come home, my daughter. Come home. Come home. Come home. So God.
God sent his son to bring you home. So click your heels three times and say, there's no place like home. Amen, amen. There is no place like home. Let's put our hands together and thank God for the word that we heard on this day. Coming from our very own minister, Daryl Fountain, in his own way. But the word is true. Man, we have messed up so many times. Anybody here have messed up somewhere along the line? You, did you have a second, third, fourth, fifth, sometimes six, seven, and eight chances? There was somebody that was praying. Man, I love that. I love that dramatization. There was somebody who was praying. Mother and father touching and agreeing. Husband and a wife somewhere saying, this don't have to be this way family member that you don't even know about. I heard about what was going on. Let me send up some prayer. Somebody need to come home. It's a Thanksgiving weekend. Somebody need to give God some thanks because we are going home. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. Amen. Thank God. I feel like preaching a little bit myself after that. And whenever you're lost and you find your way, Somebody got to tell God, thank you. Come on, tell him thank you like you know who you're talking to. Tell God, thank you like you're not a stranger. Like he is your daddy. And you can go to him whenever you need him. Anybody ever needed to call on him? Anybody ever had anything going on in your life and you needed to go home and you didn't know how, but you called on your daddy. And he made a way. He's still making ways. He's still casting out demons. He's still healing the sick. He's still delivering those who have no way out. Oh, my God. Somebody here, I believe, is just about ready to let loose. Release some stuff and let the devil know the stuff that he thought he had on you when you left home that you couldn't find your way back home. The devil is a liar. The Lord always said, my door is open for my children. Come home, my children. For those of you who are viewing, Can somebody just tell God that? Come on, just, just one time. This is a time to remember and to reflect on how good our God is. The message went, amen, to just to call us to a place where we can say, Lord, I thank you that you didn't leave me out on the street in the pig pen. God, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Amen, 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 amen. God bless you. May him a smile. May him a smile upon you today. When my baby was in the hospital, Sister Francine, and nobody couldn't help but I called on the name of the Lord, and somehow they began to find a way how to treat my baby in the hospital. And now my baby is gone home. That's a testimony. She has a testimony. She has a testimony. Don't take my word for it. Ask Sister Francine, when he bring your baby home from the hospital? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and just give God a hand clap of praise. Just give God a hallelujah praise. Just give God a thank you for who you are, for what you've done, and for what you continue to do. We thank God for the Word. We thank God for the Holy Spirit that is always in order. He does what He wants to do. We don't lead Him. He leads us. We follow where He leads us. So when God has free course, everything can be, amen, 
are pleasant and pleasing in the eyes of our Father. We are not about any show, form, or fashion. We're just about telling God how much we love Him, how much we appreciate Him. Every good and perfect gift that comes down, it comes down from above. And the Bible said he does not change like shifting shadows. Sometimes you think people are real and next thing you know they change, don't you? But I'm talking about Jesus today. If you're not saved, if you don't know that you can go home, we want to let you know that the world, the work has already been done. All you have to do is realize that why am I still out here lost? when I can go home. If you're viewing this live stream and you're not saved, if you're in the room today and you're not saved, still trying to find somebody on the street to help you out. But our God is available to you right now. All eyes closed, heads bowed. If you're not saved today and you desire to give your life to the Lord so you can really come home fully come home, not looking over your shoulder, but come home to the Father and know that he will receive you through the blood of what Jesus Christ has already done. So I invite you today to become a part of the body of Christ and line yourself up with the victory that the Lord has already promised to us. For God so loved the world, John three sixteen, that he gave, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever will whosoever will why don't you be the whosoever today if you're not saved you desire to give your life to the Lord we want to pray this prayer of salvation and repentance if you're here today and you're not saved I ask that you stand right where you are and prepare to repeat this prayer after me and if you believe the words of this prayer that you're about to pray you will be saved right now you will be transformed from that old man into the new man, from that lost man into the saved man. If you're here, don't play with this. Don't play with it. God gives us opportunity. Anybody here not saved, if you're viewing you and you're not saved, stand where you are and lift your hands towards heaven. And then just repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. Whatever is wrong, I will no longer do whatever is right that will I do I thank you Jesus for dying for me I thank you Jesus for being resurrected for me so that whenever I do come up a little short in my walk and I repent and pray in your name I know that I am forgiven so come into my heart now and be my Lord and my Savior I thank you Jesus for saving me for I am saved in Jesus name Amen if you prayed that prayer and you meant what you prayed you are no longer lost. You are now saved. We want to pray this covering prayer right now as we prepare to let you go on this beautiful weekend. I pray that everyone has had a beautifully blessed Thanksgiving weekend and that you'll continue to give God thanks every day of your life for how good he is, not just once a year or twice a year, but every day of your life should be a day of thanksgiving. We should enter into his course with thanksgiving. Come on in there, come on in there, come on in there, go into the gates with thanksgiving into the court with praise and bless his holy name. So as we prepare to go down from this place today, I just, amen, feel the urge to pray for the world and pray for our homes and pray for our communities and just pray, pray, pray because unless we use the weapon that we have, who's going to stand up against evil? The Lord said, call on me and don't waver when you call. 
So just stand right where you are. We're going to pray, and then we're going to give you the benediction on today. And we pray that, amen, for those of you who are viewing and for those of you who are here, please pay attention to the announcements as they go by and how to be a blessing to this ministry, how to be faithful, I mean, how to give and then be faithful in your giving, amen. That is one of the ways that God has given to us to let us know, do we really trust him or are we still trying to trust ourselves? Just give something to God and tell him, Lord, I thank you. And then please put on your calendar on December the 17th will be our Christmas celebration, worship service, and fellowship day right here at UCC, December the 17th, the week before Christmas Eve, before people begin to move about, traveling and going wherever they go. Please put that on your calendar, and let's come and celebrate Jesus Christmas on December the 17th. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you continue to do. Lord, this world that we're living in, we're lifting up so many different areas to you right now. So many circumstances, oh God, that have touched us individually as well as collectively. Father, sometimes we sit and we look about and we just wonder how long, how long, like Habakkuk and, and Hosea, God, we say, Lord, when will you come in and straighten up this mess? But we know that you're able and we know that grace and mercy is yet in the abundance, Father. You want us to come home. So we pray right now that those who are out there, God, seem like they don't reverence you, seem like they don't, don't even acknowledge who you are, have obtained position with man, but, Father, they are destitute with you. Spirits are jacked up, evil towards mankind, killing men, women, boys, and girls, blood running through the streets, oh God. Father, we pray for mercy today. We pray that you will go in and speak a word, God. Take control of every circumstance, every situation that we know that you are able to do, God, and turn it around and let us see the good that you're going to bring out of circumstances. So we pray right now for each and every home, each and every family. Whatever the prayer petitions are, whatever you need the Lord to do, put it on the line. Put it on your altar right now. And Father, we ask you to hear our cry. Well, God, we ask you to hear the cries of your people. And Father, as we bring these things to you, it's a sign of faith that we have in you. Knowing that you're able and that you're willing. So we thank you for your healing. We thank you for making a way when it seemed like there would be no way. We thank you, oh God, for providing for each and every one of us in every area that we are calling on you and beseeching you for your blessing right now. And now, God, as we prepare to leave this place today, but not your presence, we pray that you will go out before us and cover the highways and byways with your precious blood. We pray that no hurt, harm, or danger will befall us as we go. And when we arrive at our appointed destination, we will go in and give you all of the honor, all of the glory, and all of the praise. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide henceforth now and forevermore. We go in peace and we sin no more. God bless you. You are dismissed in the name of Jesus. Have a beautiful rest of the day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.